One of his most important quotes is, there will never be another Holocaust. Here was a Jew who was ready to fight and ready to die for what they believed in. It's my pleasure to be bringing you special events coverage for JNS from Plano, Texas at the Israel Allies Foundation Gala. It was my distinct pleasure to speak with philanthropists Bernard Haston and Bruce Gould. Join me. Bernard Haston, it is such a pleasure to have you on Global Perspectives. Thank you so much for joining Thanks me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So here we are in Plano, Texas for the Israel Allies Foundation Gala Dinner. And I know you're heavily involved in this evening's event. Tell me a little bit about your involvement. So the beginnings of my involvement here uh, have to do with a gentleman by the name of Rob Schwartz. And Rob uh, really undertook the uh, putting together of the latest Menachem Begin documentary called Upheaval. And through his work and his efforts in getting this documentary filmed and put together, he worked closely with people at the Israel Allies Foundation. And I'm the chairman of the Hidden Light Institute, which is part of Rob's organization. And um, that's how this came to be, an alliance between developing an English language documentary about the life of Menachem Begin and the Israel Allies Foundation. Israel Allies Foundation, tell me what you think is um, important about the work that they're doing. Well, the most important thing that they're doing is advocacy for Israel. And the state of Israel, the Jewish people need to have friends, need to have organizations and people, and in this case, Christian people who admire and care for the state of Israel for whatever background or basis they have for that, we should be grateful, we should be thankful, and we should work with them to better establish Israel on a more solid footing, educate the masses in the United States of America on the truth, what's really the truth, not the truth that you hear in the media, not the truth that you hear from other organizations or other administrations. I'm not going to go into specifics, but you need to hear the truth. And this organization stands with Israel. In fact, um, just uh, this week, I believe, uh, in, in time for Sukkot, perhaps last week, they announced their, the top 50 Christian leaders from around the world who Israel Allies Foundation is naming as the top 50 Christian leaders in support of Israel. I looked at that list and it is, it is really quite powerful just looking through the list. What is your sense of Christian support for Israel and the Jewish people? Well, the sense is that through their um, upbringing, through their knowledge, through their education, that they admire and really love the Jewish people and the country of Israel and what it stands for. Bernard, you know, on Global Perspectives, I've, um, I've made an effort to bring Christian voices to the show. I, between me and you and our audience, um, as two Jews talking to each other and two Jews who, uh, whose families experience anti-Semitism, your family had to flee the Holocaust in Europe. My family, I was born in Iran myself, and we had to flee the Islamic Revolution. I know that there is some hesitance in the Jewish world to accept and receive this Christian support. And, uh, and given the history of the church in Europe, I think that um, historically I can understand where that hesitation comes from. But I believe that we're in a completely different place now in terms of the Jewish-Christian friendship. Right, I agree with you. We're in a different place. And we're talking to people as I've witnessed it myself they're not looking to proselytize. They're not looking to convert us. They're truly, honestly looking to help us. So I have a strong Jewish background. I have a strong Jewish belief. If these Christian groups are trying to um, convert me to becoming Christian, I'm strong enough and knowledgeable enough to say, I'm not interested in that, but that's not what they're doing. I have spoken to them firsthand it's not what they're interested in. 
they do want a safe Israel and a safe Jewish people. What they think religiously beyond that, it's not my interest at all. I know that right now, here today, you have tens of millions of Christian evangelicals, and I describe them as evangelicals as they describe themselves. And they want our safety. They want our leaders to be um, secure in the state. And yes, peace would be nice. They would love a peaceful Middle East, etc. but they have their agenda of supporting us. It's clear as day. And it's something going back to Menachem Begin, he was able to see in the 1980s. And he said, if these organizations are trying to help me, why should I turn my back on them because of our religious differences? No, this is a people issue. This is a liberal issue. This is something he said. And let us get along in those ways to advance both organizations, not only the United States, but also Israel. Let's talk about the legacy of Menachem Begin because clearly um, it's a passion of yours. What do you think Americans don't know about the former Israeli prime minister that they should know? Well, the number one thing about Menachem Begin that he was a proud Jew and he would not deviate from his philosophy, from what he believed in. From early on through his life in Europe and then being imprisoned then coming to the British Mandate of Palestine to really fighting for an independent Jewish state. It was his passion that really influenced uh, my father. So my father tells the story about how in the DP camps, he heard the um, speeches of Menachem Begin and uh, earlier about Jabotinsky. And here was a Jew who was ready to fight and ready to die for what they believed in, as opposed to the defeated Jews in the DP camps who survived the horrors of Europe and the Holocaust. And here was someone giving the Jewish, um, giving Jew Jewish pride, giving some Jewish, not only comfort, but strength to keep on going and fight for an independent state in Israel. So that passion and that drive let someone like my father to um, have, as my dad describes, that Menachem Begin was his hero from his teenage years. And the other aspect was my uncle, my dad's older brother, who came to Israel on the Altalena, survived the entire episode by jumping onto a dinghy in the uh, Mediterranean and coming to, at the time, the, Ho the Holy Land by being shot out by fellow, by fellow Jews. And it was the really the drive of Menachem Begin to stop and cease any kind of civil war, any kind of um, um, actual war between Jews, and that another legacy of Menachem Begin to um, really be strong and courageous during a time to stop interfighting between Jews. There, there's so much there that you you shared, it's and and uh, and it's it's a part of Jewish history and Israeli history that I wonder if uh, the younger generation knows anything about. The last question I want to ask you about is the the next generation. Um, there is some concern about the next generation of evangelical uh, Christian teenagers and college students and their support for Israel and the Jewish people. As well, we know very clearly that young Jews certainly seem to have eroding numbers in terms of their support for Israel. What, what are your thoughts on what we could do better? My opinion is education. Um, yes, we live in a secular American society. Um, I don't think the Jewish people and the Jewish organizations in the United States are doing enough on Jewish education. I'm, I'm saying that um, as nicely as I can, but I had the upbringing in Indianapolis to go to a Jewish day school. Most uh, American Jews today don't. Public school is the way to go. Public school is the way to go back then. It is still today. And that's eroding and that's assimilating the Jewish people 
today. We have to do more, we have to do better to get that passion in young Jewish families and adults. But it's uh, intergenerational. It's, it's not as strong in the, let's say, my parents' ages and years, and it has not been transmitted enough. We have to do more in Jewish federations. We have to do more uh, in the Anti-Defamation League, in all of those causes, in all of those organizations, I'm not saying one's more important than the other, they all have to work together. Unfortunately, reform, conservative, reconstruction as Jews, Orthodox Jews, there isn't a lot of bonding. I've tried in my life to do all of those things, whether in Indianapolis or now in Chicago or Miami, wherever I am, but um, it's a huge challenge. We're not winning, we're not winning right now, but we have to keep trying. Well, bringing the passion back to Judaism and the Jewish people, um, it's definitely, I think, a, an important aspiration for us. Bernard Haston, it's been wonderful to have you with me on Global Perspectives. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Bruce Gould, it's so wonderful to have you with me on Global Perspectives. Thanks so much for joining me. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. So we're, on, we're here on this really festive occasion of the Israel Allies Foundation Gala in Plano, Texas. And, uh, and one of the honorees is related uh, to the legacy of Menachem Begin. And you yourself are the chairman of the, the Begin Symposium. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So the Begin Symposium is an offshoot of, of making the documentary. And we wanted to, to try to figure out a way that we could really um, bring Begin's legacy and Begin's um, uh, uh, principles and what he stood for um, to a ongoing annual event that really is like a leadership conference. And um, it's uh, being uh, put on by the Begin Center in Jerusalem. Menachem Begin to me is is uh, is is almost uh, like an iconic hero in in Israeli and Jewish history. Tell us a little bit to the audience though why you're spending so much of your time and treasure I'm gathering on this project. You know I've been involved in a lot of different um, organizations and, and things. And uh, number one, I'm uh, an art art and Zionist. I, I really. Um, uh, fell in love with Israel when I first went there in the mid 90s. I've been there 35, 40 times since. Wow. And um, when uh, Rob Schwartz, who's the executive producer of the movie, approached me and talked to me about his dream and what he wanted to do, um, I started to do some research. And I knew about Menachem Begin, but I didn't really know the, the, the real history and what it meant to Israel. And, you know, when you're a leader and you're um, leading a country, you're not always given the, the, the credit and the, um, the honor that you deserve. But your legacy really comes 30, 40, 50 years later when somebody looks back and said, you know, he really changed the course of a country and of Israel. And I think that the Jewish people have to understand what, um, how important he was to Israel and what Israel uh, means to the Jewish people. You know, somebody told me once that the Israel is a vibrant place and it's gonna survive. Oh, and I think it will survive without the diaspora, those of us that don't live in Israel. Mm -hmm. But I, I question whether the diaspora will survive without Israel? Well, Bruce, I think that's a, that's a really important question. And, uh, and especially because today we're finding um, some disturbing trends here in the United States of young Jews feeling less and less supportive of Israel, and I think um, less attachment to their Jewish identity. And, uh, and as well, even among evangelical Christian younger people, and of course the broader society in the United States, what do you think is, uh, is important for American Jewry to understand about the Israel-U.S. relationship? Well, and, and this is why I think people have to understand what Menachem Begin did. Menachem Begin made Israel an inclusive country. 
he was responsible for Ethiopian immigration. He was responsible for Russian immigration. He was responsible for the Ukrainians. When these people were oppressed and they couldn't practice their religion and their freedom to exercise um, the way they wanted to, um, to, to believe in their faith, um, Israel opened their doors and let them in. And uh, that was Menachem Begin. That's what Menachem Begin did. And people have to understand that Israel is, and I know that they always get a bad rap. If, if there's one thing you could say about Israel, they're not the best PR agents. Um, I really believe that if, you know, Israel did one one hundredth of the things that they're accused of doing, that they are the best at masking and hiding. Because when you go there, you can tell that it's a free country. You could tell that, I mean, there, it's, 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 a, it's a free, vibrant democracy, and they respect all religions, Absolutely. not just Judaism. And uh, there's very few places in the world that you can say, and you know, I, I say to young people, you know, um, there, there, there is a lot of people on uh, that I think do not. They're being fed a bad line. They're being, they're being told things. The 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 um, uh, lesbian and gay community, you know, kind of have have lined up on the left side of understanding why is Israel so inclusive and one of the freest places in the world for them to exercise their um, sexual freedom. Absolutely. And preference, and and why is there, you know, people um, who 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 claim that Israel is is an apartheid state? I mean, that that's not really that's not really anti-Zionism and anti-Israel. That's really anti-Semitism. Well, Bruce, I and couldn't agree. Masked. I couldn't agree with you more. And like you said, uh, all it takes is to actually visit Israel and walk down the streets and see the, uh, you know, you can see a Muslim woman in a hijab walking next to an Orthodox Jewish woman with her head covering next to a secular Israeli, next to a Druze. And all of these people are, are really living in peace side by side with each other. And I really can't uh, think of too many other countries where you see that, especially in the region. Um, and so, so Bruce, I want to stay on the Begin Symposium because if I understand correctly, part of the mission of the symposium is to address the topics that, uh, that Menachem Begin worked so hard on as prime minister, um, but that you believe are still relevant to our policy discussions today. So is, is part of that conversation um, these accusations, the slanderous lies that are coming at Israel, like you said, the, the slander of the accusation of Israel being an apartheid state and so on, that we're seeing a lot of that coming out of the left. Um, what, what is it that the symposium tries so to address? We want to gather together leaders, um, uh, important speakers, people uh, of notoriety. We're trying to develop a curriculum and, a, and a, an agenda, which really takes what McNock, Menachem Begin tried to, to just do in his everyday life. And I don't think that um, uh, when you interview some people and, and, and look at Menachem Begin and you watch the documentary, I don't think he really, like a lot of leaders, cared about um, you know, what people thought were, were going to think about him 20, 50 years down the road. He was concerned with ruling a country, making it a vibrant place. And um, first and foremost, he was a Jew. And it was very important for him to make sure that there was a place on this earth where Jews, if they wanted to go to live in freedom and in peace, there was a place to do that. And, and, he, and, and you know, one of his most important quotes is, there will never be another Holocaust. It will never happen. And that was his promise. And that was his uh, ambition when he was prime minister. And, you know, he, may, he didn't always make the, the, the right decisions. He didn't always make um, the easy decisions and the popular decisions. He made the hard decisions. He made the decisions that a lot of other people 
wouldn't make. I want to ask you one last question. You just brought up the Shoah, the Holocaust, and uh, I understand that you're leading efforts to build a world-class Holocaust museum in Orlando. Yes. What's the vision and why do you choose Orlando? So um, I have been a resident of Orlando for almost, uh, say, 25 years. And Orlando has grown tremendously. And it is really the centerpiece of a lot of uh, visitors and tourism in the United States. And we have this vision to build a world-class Holocaust center, as you said, in conjunction with the Shoah Foundation um, out of California, the USC Shoah Foundation. And we want to bring um, the dimensions and testimony and um, the uh, um, ideas that Steven Spielberg created when he created the Shoah Foundation. Um, we want to be able to expose more people to that. And we think it's a natural fit that Orlando, which is really the, the tourist capital of the United States, um, that we would make it a natural place that people could come visit and really um, expand people's knowledge of, of what happened in uh, Nazi Germany in the 1940s and use the Holocaust as a teaching tool um, to young people to make them understand what happens and how it's so easy to recreate this and that we we have to keep it alive and keep um, the education of the Holocaust and, and the atrocities of it to future generations so it never happens again. Bruce, you know what? I am so thrilled to hear of this project because uh, I know, for example, the U.S. Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. does a great job of educating young people in a way that's really age appropriate. And so I actually can imagine families who are coming to Orlando for Disney and the other attractions that they could come and learn um, about this darkest hour in human history, but that it's possible to do that in a way that's family oriented. So I'm, I'm really happy thank to you. hear about thank this. You. And thank you so much for joining us on Global. Thank Thank you. Perspectives. Thank you so much.